Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Beat Your Addiction with John Giordano. I'm your co-host, Scott Jones, and I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us today. And before we get started with the show, just a quick reminder that it's important that if you like this show, that you subscribe to the channel and certainly share this with your friends, um, because that's how we're going to distribute this show. John, how are you? I'm doing really well. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I staying out of great. trouble? I'm staying out of trouble, working out, training, eating right. I'm fine, you know, just really doing what I'm supposed to do. And how's the family? I mean, you got... My, my wife is doing incredible. You know, she did the ketamine treatment. And let me tell you something. She's off almost every med. She's got one more med left, and she's almost completely off of that. And I can't believe the profound change in her personality. That's For the better. That's excellent. You know, really, it was really cool. You know, and I see a lot of people up at our clinic at the, the ketamine infusion clinic of uh, South Florida is where I uh, went partners with these ladies that, you know, they're so professional and they, they, they do it so well. They have heart monitors and, you know, they're, they're anesthesiologists and we do coaching and counseling. We And we also... Um, treat the gut and we treat everything where a pro depression and anxiety can possibly come from. And we do aftercare with them. I mean, it's, it's really a cool scent. I'm really proud to be with these ladies. That's excellent. And they're up in Pompano, I believe, right? Yeah, it's in yeah. Pompano. The ketamine clinic of South Florida. Um, and uh, that's, that's kind of something different for you, John. Um, you know, over the years, you've learned different things about addiction. So we're going to be talking. I mean, this is today's show. It's going to be us talking to you guys, and that's what we're going to be doing today. But you know, one of the things is when you started thirty something years ago with uh, with getting into the treatment industry, a lot has changed about what you've learned. How important is that that you keep learning and keep adapting new ideas <clears throat> in treatment? Because well, there's a lot of people seem like they're stuck. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what it is. If you if you don't remain a student, okay you're never going to learn. And that's how you become a good teacher. So, you know, first of all, science is, is moving forward. Um, people were learning more and more things, like, for instance, with ketamine. Five years ago, uh, I would have never did this. You know, I I, uh, I heard about ketamine. I said, ah, oh, special K. People get higher. And I said, I don't want this stuff. You know, but then science started showing how it changes um, and it creates new neurons in the place where depression and anxiety come from and how so many people are really getting help with this. And, you know, medications are a Band-Aid, and they were never meant for long-term use. And, and the problem is that most people don't understand is that these medications have a big downside, and a lot of times they really don't work. Now, I'm not against medication, okay, but the bottom line is I just say it the way it is because my wife has been on medication for 43 years. And let me tell you something. It blunts everything. You know, either you gain weight or you, you, you sexually get dysfunctional. Uh, then the meds, you have to change them, take 10 milligrams of this. Oh, no, take less, more of that. Take less of this. Oh, take this medication to fix that medication. And it's like a roller coaster ride. And what the ketamine clinic does that we have uh, – we get people, we help people get off. We have a psychiatrist on staff. Um, I mean, I'm watching people get off their meds. I'm watching it in my own home. You know, I couldn't believe that it was possible. <clears throat> but we don't just do the ketamine. Ketamine is not a magic bullet. And it's got to be done a certain way. Absolutely. Under supervision, it's not you take a whole bunch just so you get high. No. That's not what you're talking about here. No. I want to make that very, very clear. Yeah, this is low dose. And everybody's different. And the girls and, and uh, the ladies that I'm partners with, they're anesthesiologists. And they know how to get people to different levels. They, you know, we, we review how they respond. And, you know, according to their weight also. And we just change the level. Okay. Low doses forms what happens is you get these like, um, how would you say it? Like, like a second psychedelic experience. But it's. You go back into your traumas and you have what I call resolution. And it's really interesting to hear people talk about what they experience. And, and you know, but you know what the sad part is? And it really upsets me because I watched it happen in the, we both watched it happen in the addiction field. People see money 
So now they're just opening up ketamine clinics all over the place, and they're not really doing counseling. They're not treating the gut. They're not t- teaching people how to live a quality life. You know, uh, and it's just about money. Yeah. And they're giving the same dose to people, which is not the way you do this. And, you know, we have heart monitors on them. We have all kinds of stuff. We do, you know, we talk to their therapist or their psychiatrist. Uh, and you'll even determine at times, this isn't the right medication. This isn't the right process for you. That's right. Because not everything's. if somebody tells you they got a magic thing for everybody, Run away. Uh-uh. Run away. Because This is not for everybody. It's not. No. In any treatment, any uh, ketamine clinic or any treatment center that throws a modality at you and says this works for everybody, just don't believe them. First of all, if you are schizophrenic, if you have a disassociative disorder yep. and things like that, okay, if you suffer from hallucinations, this is not for you. Yeah. All right? And we have them fill out papers. We do history on them. Uh, we do a psychosocial, what it's called. So we really do an in-depth research before we have anybody come to our clinic. And a lot of these places don't do this. Oh, you got money? Come on in. It's okay. And <laughs> yeah. That's not cool because people are desperate. And, you know, I watched my wife. You know, she's been in mental institutions. She tried to kill herself a few times. This is a serious disease, you know. And the bottom line is this is not a, if, if it's all about money, man. You really go sell drugs, okay? Leave these leave these people alone, okay? And and the bottom line is is that it was amazing that I was against this, and now I'm seeing what it does. And I'm saying to myself, wow, I could have did this five years ago, yeah, and helped a lot of people. And you know, if, if done the proper way, just like anything, done the proper way. Now, you know what I like to talk about also is treatment. Yeah, let's definitely. talk about let's treatment. talk about that, John. Because just like we were saying, every treatment center is not right for everybody, and there's a lot of places that aren't right for anybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's be honest. Um, you know, uh, the first thing that people get attracted to is the advertisement, advertising, and right. stuff. You know, and that's a big. You know, they look it up. I love they they got these beautiful places that have these. Everybody's out in the ocean fishing and surfing and doing that. Then you look it up and you find out the places in Arizona. There is no ocean. It's just, it's lie after lie on the internet. It's tough to, it, it's hard not to get sucked into that, isn't it? Especially well, for parents who are desperate. Well, you, you they know, think they see something beautiful. Well, you know what it is? Most people don't know what constitutes what I consider, or I'm saying my own personal views, or what's a good treatment center. So let's right, look let's at, outline that. Yeah, let's, look, first of all, a lot of these therapists, I teach at one of the colleges, I was teaching group therapy to uh, MSWs, LCSWs, some psychiatrists. And, and, you know, it's not that they can't help people. I, I don't want to say that, okay? But be honest with you, if you have a trained therapist that's also a recovering addict, they much easily get in rapport with people. Rapport is very important to get... Because you can mouth off whatever you want of all the stuff that you read in a book, but if you don't get a rapport with the client, it's not getting through. Now, I'm very fam- familiar with rapport because that's part of what my training is about is building rapport. But how would you explain rapport to everybody out there who might not have heard that term? Okay, somebody that can relate to you. you I make it real simple. Someone that can relate to what you're saying. And build trust. Right, and build trust. Yes. And, you know, information is information. But you see, when you talk to an addict, You can't talk to their head. You got to talk to their heart. Mm. And that's what makes the difference. You see, if you talk to their head, they have low self-esteem to begin with, so they figure you're talking down to them. So that's one thing. Uh, Group therapy, okay? Group therapy, in my opinion, my humble opinion, should be no more than eight to ten people. Because if you figure out there's an hour of group, let's say, right, Mm -hmm. and you got ten people in the group, how much time does that leave everybody to talk? How much time did they go back and forth with the therapist? It comes out to hardly anything. Okay? When you have, I mean, not 10 people, when you have 15 people, okay? Because some of these places have 15, 20 people. It's not a group, it's a concert. Well, we've seen them with 60. Yeah. It becomes a lecture. Right. It becomes a lecture. And although everyone's went on a lecture with a large group of people is fine, but on a daily basis, you need those small groups. Because how are you going to process information on an individual level 
unless you can talk That's to right. them. And then you need individual treatment, okay? Yes. You need an individual uh, uh, with the client at least once or twice a week so you can get specific on that particular person. So when you're looking for a treatment center, see what kind of groups they have, who's running the group, what kind of experience the therapist has. Mm -hmm. Some of these places are getting kids out of school. Okay, they're just learning. And, you know, they're they're as effective as they could possibly be, but they, they really don't have the experience. So you want to make sure that they have at least some experienced therapist in there that know about addiction, not just mental health. Because... Even though mental health is intertwined with addiction, okay, you need to know the whole thing, okay? And if you don't, it's hard to even get through to a client. First of all, treatment is too short of a time. It's 28 days, and the insurance companies are trying to make it two weeks. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, a guy's using 20 years, and he's, you know, and now you, you got him in treatment for 28 days. It's like a joke, okay? And it's sad. Because people, uh, they, they, it's like the revolving door. And what a lot of treatment centers are not teaching, okay, is about the gut, all right? And we talk about the gut, the microbiome, the microbiota. <clears throat> what does that have to do with addiction? Well, real simple, most addicts, okay, medicate themselves yeah. because of the depression and the anxiety. So they look for drugs to get high. Now, I'm a recovering addict. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm coming up on 38 years in recovery. And if you don't start exercising and get rid of your stress and you don't raise your dopamine and you don't start eating right, you know, well, addicts don't eat right. When they eat frozen pizza, they use whatever they can put in their mouth. Maybe sometimes they don't eat at all. Okay, so what do you think their body's doing? And it's out of homeostasis. It doesn't work right. Neither does your mind. So you need, you need to learn about nutrition in the place. You need, you need to know about how to exercise, okay? There's a lot of things that treatment centers are not focusing on, okay? They're focusing on, okay, let's say art therapy, aquarium, aquarium therapy with the horses and things. That's all good stuff, okay? But these guys... When they go back into life, a lot of them don't own a horse, and a lot of them are not going to be artists. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. I think they need life skill training. Okay, um, quitting drugs and alcohol is the easy part, and most people don't understand that. It's how to deal with life on life's terms. That's what we have a hard time with. Absolutely, um, you know, and I agree with you. Life skills are very important. Um, one of the things you might want to look for when you're looking at treatment centers is do they have people that are uh, nutritionists on staff that can talk to your 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 loved one about about health and, and diet? Um, do they have people with eating disorder special? You know, a lot of people come in they have eating disorders. Well, you and know what? No eating disorder. How about specialists. gambling addiction, sex addiction? Those we're are what we call not, the lifestyle addictions. We're yeah. not looking at other addictions when people come into treatment for drugs and alcohol. We're only looking at the shiny object, okay? And the bottom line is, is that I don't know any addicts that only have one addiction, including this addict, okay? So you got spending addiction, you got work addiction. So people say, well, how do I know I'm, uh, it's an addiction? So I have a real simple way of explaining it, okay? When you continue to use a substance or a behavior in spite of adverse consequences, maybe you need to take a look at that. Bottom line, if it's causing your life to be in, in disruption, you're losing jobs, your relationships are falling apart, all of these things are happening to you, you're getting arrested, maybe you have a problem. Now, you know, I, I like to talk about also the support groups, like the self-help groups, 12-step groups. You know, when I first came in, I said, look, I don't want to join a new religion, number one, <laughs> okay? Uh, number two, I used to say, I, I wouldn't even get high with these people, okay? Uh, number three, I used to say, oh, I go to these meetings, and I feel like I want to use. So those that was my conversation because I only looked at the darkness. I wasn't looking at the light. I wasn't looking at the people that were kept coming, sick like me, 
but started to look like they started to get well. And all I could tell anybody today is I wouldn't be doing this for 38 years, okay, if it was baloney. And self-help groups, what it really does is it gives you a support that you need yeah. with like-minded people. You can't hang out with drug addicts if you want to get off of drugs. Can't hang out in a bar if you want to stop drinking. I mean, it's really simple stuff. I mean, it's not rocket science, okay? Um, and the bottom line is, is that when you have some, the proper support and you start to get a role model that maybe you may connect with or not, okay, somebody that could take you to 12 steps. What am I doing with 12 steps? What is this stuff? Well, what it is, it's a way of looking inside of you and seeing what you became and what you can become and how to, in retrospect, and how to just look at the things you did in your life and how to start becoming vulnerable, mm. okay? We don't know how to be vulnerable. Men are not supposed to cry. Women are not supposed to divulge some of the things they did that they're ashamed of. And these are the things that keep you prisoner in this addiction and mental health. And when you start to when you start to overcome that, and like I was molested when I was a kid, uh, part of me liked it, and I couldn't figure out thought it was something wrong with me. And the other part, I felt shame and guilt, and and, and horror from. Um, I only went to the ninth grade. I used to be embarrassed that I couldn't spell very well. I only have spell check now, so I'm good. <laughs> I would never tell you that. I would never tell you that I felt insecure. I mean, to look on the outside, being a tough karate guy that I am, you know, all this other stuff, you would never know that it was insecure. And I would never tell you that. But you see, that stuff does no longer have power over me anymore. Okay? Because I looked at it, I realized it, I learned from it, and I moved on. And it's, it's, it's not easy. It takes work and it takes the proper guidance. And these 12 steps help you to do that. And, you know, look, people say, well, it doesn't work. No, no, it works. We don't work. That's the difference. Okay. You have to work at it. It's like the guy that says, I'm not in shape. Do you go to the gym? You work out? No. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? Then you got the guy that goes to the gym for one month, right? Starts to get in shape and then stops and can't figure out why he's not in shape. One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> you know, in our eating habits and our food supply is, is horrific. Okay. I mean, it's all, listen, our whole planet is the, I call it the addiction model short term success and long term failure. And what I mean by that is, is like, look, look, sugar, processed food. Uh, look at the stuff that's killing us. Cancer's on the rise like crazy. Um, we have this virus, okay, and everybody's, uh, you know, take the shot, do this, do that. How about build up your immune system, okay? Oh, we forgot about that, the immune system that fights off disease and viruses. We're not talking about these things. You know, like at, like at our clinic, what we do is we, we offer micronutrient testing and heavy metal testing to see where you're really at, okay, and what you need and what you don't need. You know, the body needs nourishment, proper nourishment, not garbage. You know, usually if the food tastes good, it's not good. <laughs> I know. I right? know. It's, it's a uh, shame. You know, John, you're not saying people can't enjoy a piece of cake on a birthday. You're not saying they no. can't enjoy a slice of pizza every now and then. No, I'm not uh, saying New that. York pizza, not that Chicago crap. Good I got, New York I got, pizza, I got right? news for you. I go to New York and the pizza there changed. I don't know what no they're way. Going. Yeah, and the hot dogs. Not it's the, the first same. thing I go for, hot dog, pizza, and a pretzel. It's not the same. No, the pretzels, uh, you take one bite, they get hard, they get thrown and break a window. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're not saying you got to give up everything, but if no. you build a healthy habit in a healthy eating style or lifestyle around food and around exercise, you can enjoy those things on occasion in, in, in moderation. Don't eat 12 pieces of cake. Have one piece. Don't eat 18 slices of you pizza. Know, they call it Have one or two. They call it a cheat meal. Okay? Well, you know, I, I, I just uh, got over cancer. I had throat cancer. And, you know, and I, I knew what to do about it because I'm with a lot of doctors that have been to alternative medicine and things like that. And I changed my whole food around. I went 
I'm vegan. I lost 20 pounds. Uh, and I got to tell you, I have more energy than 10 people. I feel terrific. And the cancer's gone. They did a PET scan with, uh, uh, what do you call it, with that stuff they put in you. And uh, I don't have cancer anymore. So all I can tell you is this, guys. There's stuff out there that really works. But you got you to gotta, you gotta dig for it and look for it. And um, I always tell people, please don't believe a word I tell you. Go find out for yourself. There's so many things that in treatment that our treatment, G and G, we did hyperbaric medicine, oxygen under pressure. It heals the brain. Hello? Anybody want to argue that drugs and alcohol doesn't damage the brain? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that, that really work, but people need a, a good head start. And that's why, you know, I keep going back to the ketamine because let me tell you something. I, uh, the people that I see in there, they come in, they're desperate. They're, they're so tired of being on these medications that don't work. A lot of them try to commit suicide at one point in their life, mm -hmm. like my wife. And, 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 and they really want to get off these meds and, and they're stuck on them because they're afraid because they become addicted to the meds. Well, aren't we taught, John? I mean, from the time day we're born, we're taught uh, take a med. If you suffer from anything, take meds. You got a headache, take take a pill. You can't sleep, take a pill. You got to wake up, take a pill. You, you know, everything we do, you know, you, you sneeze. Oh, quick, take a pill. Don't let all the disease come out of you. Like if their nose is running, that's all bad stuff coming out. Let it run and let it come out of you. No, they take we take pills, we dry it all up, and we stay sick. Well, you know what it so is. It's, it's kind of like we're trained that way, John. Well, to, they to market. Take pills. I don't know about anybody else. I don't remember growing up seeing uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies advertise. They tell this doctor to give you these pills. Oh, that's yeah, I love that. And right? then, and then, and then, oh, you got arthritis or you got pain in your shoulder, and you can take this drug, and then you have. Oh yeah, but you can get a heart attack. You can die. You can your liver can go yeah. not function anymore. If you find any of these things happening, please stop the medication. But I got a pain in my shoulder. I don't want to die <laughs> from the pain in my shoulder. Um, I mean, it's ridiculous. And we buy the farm, and then people go, "Oh, I'm not going to do that drug. That's an hallucinogenic. That used to be, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, something to get high with." Look, guys done properly, under proper supervision. Go look this stuff up, please, okay? Well, that's like, there is a proper use of oxycodones. It's a medical proper use for oxycodone for a certain medical purpose. If it's used for that purpose in a certain way, then it's a, it's not a bad drug, but we abuse it. Just like ketamine could be, yeah, used, but but Scott could be used in a way, therapeutically, that will not be in a bad way. Right. Well, see, well, like for oxycontin, thing. for instance, let me explain to you what these chemists did. If you go in the molecular structure of oxycodone, oxycontin, that molecular, it changes the way the brain functions. Right. That's why you can't get off them. Because it, it, it does it in a way that when you try to get off, you go through all these different things right. that your body goes through that you don't, and you run back onto it again. You know? So... You know, the pharmaceutical companies are really smart. And, and what I found out, some of these pharmaceutical companies were owned by Nazi families. Now, people say, oh, come on, that's not true. Go look it up. Don't believe me. After World War II, the Nazis, the, some of the Nazi families bought into uh, pharmaceutical companies. Remember, methanol came from the Nazis. People don't know that. A lot of medications came from Germany, the Nazis. Okay? So they figured they can open up a pharmaceutical company, and that's what they do. And, you know, people go, well, it's not FDA approved. Listen, guys, go look that up too. Who do you think pays the FDA? Pharmaceutical companies. Now, how does that work? Really easy. The pharmaceutical company gives the FDA money so they can qualify their drugs for use. That's true. Okay, so whoever has the gold makes the rules, as far as I know. That sounds like, yeah, I mean, it sounds right. And you know, uh, whether you want to get into the where the pharmaceutical companies, they're, they're a business now. doesn't matter where they started. They're a business now. Their business is selling more and more and more, selling it for more and more. Even if some of it is worthwhile, John, they make it so damn expensive. You can't have Listen, it anyway. It's, it was for you short. You can't even have it anyway. These medications were for short-term use. That's what they're supposed they to be. They weren't for 
long-term use. The reason they were for long-term use now is because that's how they make money. Yep. Now, I'm not saying some people shouldn't be on medication, okay? I'm not saying any. I'm for whatever works. Yes. Okay? But I would investigate other things before you get stuck on something. Please don't stop your medications based on this show. No. Talk to your doctor. Yeah, we're Talk not, to your doctor. We're not telling you to do that because this stuff you can't just stop anyway. And the way we do it at the clinic is we have a, uh, we have a, a medical director. And what we do is we titrate these people off slowly because the people get rebound uh, and they go through horror shows that people just try to quit these drugs. These drugs cannot be just quit, just like Valium or Benzos. You can't just quit them. You can have a seizure and die. Just like alcohol. You can't, if you're drinking alcohol heavy, all right, and you're addicted to alcohol, you can't just quit alcohol. You'll have a seizure and die. That's it, why the insurance companies yeah. cover that. And your people want to work with the physicians and work with the people. We work with their therapists, yes. with their psychiatrists. And if the psychiatrist doesn't go for it and person really wants to get off their meds, we connect them with our psychiatrist and sees if it's appropriate for them. It may not be, okay? Yeah, yeah. But they make that determination. Absolutely. That's what we do. But, you know, and, and that's this is the way you're doing the Academy Clinic should be the way the treatment centers operate as well. It should be looking at the individual, figuring out, does this work for them? In what way does it work for them? What doses and what other, what other attributes do we have to put in there so it'll work better? Um, so you guys are doing that on an individual case-by-case -case basis. And these days, that's kind of what we need in treatment centers as well. Every treatment center out there says we can do individual programs. Yeah. Is it? And now, have you seen that done properly yet? No. <laughs> it's not possible. But listen, what is treatment? I, I, I give you the same thing. Same with the ketamine, same with ibogaine, same with the psilocybin, same with all of these things that really work really well, Okay. You need follow-up care. Yeah. Okay. You don't just do a substance and say, "Oh, I'm cured." Or you go to a, a treatment center for 28 days, say, "Okay, I'm, I'm done." Or people think they go to detox that they're in treatment. No, it's detox, and it's really not detox or stabilization, but that's all of the program. The bottom line is, is this: if you don't have an aftercare program, and that's why we focus on that, you need follow-up. Now, people say, well, I have to take uh, uh, ketamine only once? No. For some people, yes. For a lot of people, no. You take what is known as booster shots, okay? You come in for a booster. So maybe once a month, once every three months, six months, once a year. Some people don't have to come in at all. Now, this clinic's been open for two years. They have a mix of all of that. So that's the first question I asked. I wanted to know, was this the first one, one time? That's it, you know? And no. But look at it this way. You take a boost, even let's say it's once a month, okay? Medication you take tw twice a day sometimes. Yeah. So which do you want to do? It, it makes a lot of sense to check that out. Um, and, John, we're, we're coming down to the end of the show already. I mean, it's amazing. But uh, let's 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 re recap a few things about treatment centers real quick, about people. Because you say you want people to look for treatment centers in a certain way, certainly. And treatment options, like the ketamine clinics and stuff. But what what is what do you think is the most important thing with finding out about a treatment center? It, it can't be just going online and looking at the pretty pictures and reading the... Go, go there. Uh, there you go. Talk to the people. Ask questions. The questions they ask is how large are your groups? How often are groups? Do, do they and have, who should they be talking to, John? This is not the uh, marketer they should be no, talking no, to. No, 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 no. They should be talking to either the clinical director or the program director. Okay, not the marketer. All right, because the marketer will say one thing, then you get in there, it's a whole totally different thing. Uh, you want to make sure they have the most important part. Okay, the most important part is aftercare. Yeah, That's the most important part. That means when they leave treatment, what is the plan? What is the follow-up? Do they have a support staff? Like we used to have a support staff, our alumni. We used to help them get into a sober living or three-quarter way house or whatever you want to call it. We used to help them get jobs. We used to help them with the families. We make sure that they have family therapy. Very important. Okay. And if they left the area, you would find out what's available for them in their own town we, that's and right. help them set that up. We would get them a therapist in their own town, okay, and have them go that way, somebody who is like-minded to us. Yep. 
And, you know, look, guys, treatment is just to pull back the veil of what went on. Now, the rest of it is how to rework yourself and becoming a human being again. Because we become inhuman humans when we're using drugs and alcohol. So please, make sure there's an aftercare program. Make sure they have family therapy. Make sure they look at other uh, addictions that you may have because addicts, they, they hop. So they quit drugs and alcohol. Now they got an eating disorder. Or they got a gambling disorder and, and all these things. They, then they go back to the drug of choice. Yeah. So everything needs to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, make sure they're just not throwing pills at you. Absolutely. Ask for alternatives. And trauma work is a good idea as trauma well. Trauma is paramount because most addicts and alcoholics have trauma, yeah. I, especially in a child work and, and things like that. All the therapies are important, but so are the holistic approaches, the, the other comprehensive approaches like nutrition and exercise and, and aftercare. And all of these things are very important. Otherwise, you're going to go to treatment. You're going to come out. You're going to go back to doing the same stuff you've always done because it's familiar. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a uh, quick reminder also, um, I, I, I'm hoping that everyone can finds that right treatment center for your loved one. But while your loved one's in treatment, John, shouldn't the family take care of themselves too? Well, that's why, that they, that's why they need to go to Al-Anon or Naranon. Uh, yeah. Naranon is for drugs and, you know, drugs and alcohol is for Al-Anon. You, you guys got to learn how to deal with your own stuff because most families, believe it or not, are sicker than the client. Okay, I always say that, and people go, "What do you mean I'm sick?" The client. <laughs> well, you're addicted to the client. Look what you're going through. Yeah, you're enabling them. You're codependent. Okay, you have to. You know what it's like when you don't treat the family. It's like going to the garden, getting all dirty, going taking a shower, and then putting the dirty clothes back on. That's what it's like when you have a client that goes to treatment that comes back into the same family that has not that had any help. Has yeah, not absolutely. had any help. Family is very important. You need a comprehensive approach to this disease. Yeah. This will kill you. So you better make sure that you're looking at everything. And if you want, you can call me anytime. Okay, very happy. Doesn't cost you a dime. Okay, I, I'll i guide you as best I can. Most people say, what is a good treatment center? Well, I know one or two. Okay, Uh Go from there. I don't have any monetary thing yeah. with them, or I don't get paid for anything like that. Uh, it also depends on who you're talking about, right? Well, you know, I got there's the some better, treatment centers that I think are excellent, but I, they're not excellent. I'll tell you for what's really what's really good. You know, Bark and Bark is a a, a non for profit. Okay, they run it's, on grants and state funds, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and they have to get down to the basics. They don't have time. To Great screw program. Around. Right. Great program. I had my uh, son-in-law went through there. Nice. Yeah. Not that he's clean, but, you know, he went through there. <laughs> he didn't follow up, of course. But anyway. But that's important. Make sure you get a chance to visit, talk with people. If you can't get through to somebody in charge and talk to them about the place, it's not a place you want to be. Um, I know you can't visit every place, but you know what? There's Zoom and there's there's FaceTime on phones. They can walk you around the facility, and you don't even have to be there. That's right. And you can you can ask for those kind of things. And ask them what kind of experience the therapist has. John, but, people will research their car more than they research a place that they're going to try to save their They'll fix their, their kids car life. before they fix themselves. Are yeah. you kidding? But the huh. reason, I'm going to buy a car. I spend six months researching. Oh, I'm going to send my son to a place because he's dying. I, I, I'll look at an ad and say, that's well, a good place. Well, you know what it is? A lot of people are so tired of being beat up, lied yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And spending all their money, and they just want to get them out of there yeah, someplace I just understand. to get away from them. And, and I understand that. But if, if you want John's help, go to johnjgiordano.com. That's johnjgiordano.com right there on your screen. Uh, go there, and uh, John's contact information is there. He's always willing to help out. You can always give us a shout over here at the ATC, uh, the Addiction Training Center as well. Karen and I are willing to help out. Um but really the bottom line is trust your gut, talk to people, and make sure that they're going to get the services they need. Um, that, that's the whole thing. That's the whole bottom and, line. And you know what? Don't close yourself off to any ideas because the TV tells you not to do something. Look around. Right. The TVs, I love, you're, you're so right, John. Why is the TV telling you to, to suggest medications to your doctor? 
Hey, by the way, if your arm hurts, make sure you ask your doctor about this med. Shouldn't your doctor already know about it? Most it's, doctors, listen, with the insurance companies, what's going on, most doctors have to see 100 clients to get the money they want to make, where before they had only see 50. So a lot of doctors are not up on what's the latest science. I went with science. I'm part of a team of 50, people that work with 15 universities. I'm in 79 medical and scientific peer-reviewed journals. All right? So I don't just talk about anecdotal things. I work with science and evidence. So I just want to let you guys know to look me up, look it around, and you'll see. I almost died from this. My wife almost died, and my son almost died. I don't fool around when it comes to this disease. It's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. But you know what? Life can be great, and um, and there's plenty of time for laughter and joy. But you got to do the right things first. Take care of your loved ones. Make sure they're going somewhere good. And if you want more information about the Ketamine Clinic, um, certainly get a hold of John. Um, yeah, it's on my website. And you, go to, website. you can go to the Ketamine Infusion Clinic of South Florida. Yes, it's absolutely. In, it's in the... Uh, it's in Pompano it's Beach. Pompano Beach. I keep uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I forget that, too. Yeah. It's up in Pompano Beach, right around the corner from uh, Fort Lauderdale. And I do the PTSD work, by the way. So I, I work with uh, – I'm a chaplain for the police department also, and I work with the police officers that have been in shootings, rape victims, people coming back from Iraq, Afghanistan. So I'm, I'm part of the clinicians there. Yeah. So I do that also with the ketamine. So some uh, always something new to check out. Um, and you know what? Keep watching this show because you know what? We still are learning. And next week, we don't know what we're going to discover. It's kind of exciting sometimes, isn't it, John? Oh, man, let me tell you, there's so much knowledge out there if you just want to go through the weeds and find it. <laughs> That's right. And we're still looking. Uh, once you figure you got it all figured out, you're kind of done. And uh, I'm not ready to be done. Are you ready to be done? No. That's why we keep this show going. That's right. So make sure you share this show with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, certainly uh, go out to johnjgiordano.com and get John's information about what he does. That's the initial J. The initial okay. J, just like it on the screen. And, uh, and check out what John's been up to. And uh, certainly give him your input as well. So you, he knows what you need to know about. And so we can bring you more information on these shows. For now, I want to thank everybody for joining us. I'm your co-host, Scott Jones, for John Giordano. John, you have a good one, my friend. You too, Scotty. And all of you out there, you take care. Remember... Do something nice for somebody else and two things nice for yourself today and you'll have yourself a good day.